Hey, welcome to another edition of Apple a Day. In today's episode, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on the differences between flow and opacity when using a brush in Photoshop or Affinity Photo, Capture One, any number of applications. This basically applies across the board to all applications. So when you're talking about flow and opacity with the brush tool, they almost do the same thing. So the opacity controls how transparent your brush will be and the flow controls what percentage of the brush you're applying with each stroke. And I'll explain that with the demonstration. As you can see, I've got an Affinity Photo document open, which will help me explain the relationship between opacity and flow. So I'm gonna choose a brush and I'm gonna make sure the opacity and flow are both set to 100%, uh, which is on my first column here. So I'm just gonna paint in a line. And as you can see, it's 100% opaque. There's no transparency whatsoever. So now I'm gonna change my opacity to 20%. I'm gonna to go to the second column. I'm gonna click and I'm gonna start painting and you can see it's 20% opaque. And my mouse button has stayed down and no matter how many times I paint over this, it doesn't get any darker. It stays at 20% opacity. If I were to lift up the brush, like in other words, release the mouse and paint again, then it lays down another brush that's also 20%. And every time I paint a new brush stroke on top of the old one, it, the new brush is 20% opacity. So ultimately it will get darker. I could do this many, many times and it would become solid black. Now, if I reverse this and put the opacity to 100% and the flow, let's make it 10. So if I start painting, what's happening is I'm only painting 10% of the specified opacity. You pretty much can multiply the flow times the opacity to determine how much paint you're going to be applying with each stroke. Now I've not released my mouse button or in effect lifted my paintbrush from the canvas. And if I draw back on top of the line, you'll see it's getting darker. It's laying down another 10% of that flow. So you can color it in until it reaches the maximum specified opacity, which is 100%. Okay, in the next column, I'm gonna change the opacity to 50%, and I'm gonna leave the flow at 10. Now, as I said a moment ago, you pretty much multiply the flow times the opacity. The maximum you can lay down without lifting the brush off the canvas or releasing the mouse button will always be the specified opacity. So in this example, where the opacity is 50% and the flow is 10, it's gonna paint down 10% of that 50% opacity. You can see it's very light because it's 10% of 50%, which really is only 5% opacity. And I'm not lifting up the mouse. And as I paint over it again and again, just brushing it on there, it will never reach 100% opacity. The maximum it can reach is 50%. That's as dark as it's gonna get. I've released the mouse and if I paint again using a fresh stroke, I can paint on again another 50%. It's still not gonna be solid black because it's 50% painted onto 50%. So hopefully you get the idea. Now the next column, I'm gonna show you what happens if the opacity is set to zero and the flow is set to 100. You can probably guess, nothing happens. You can't paint anything with that. Because as I said earlier, they're basically multiplied together. So zero times 100 is zero. If you reverse the values, it's the same thing. 100 opacity with no flow does not display any results either. So in this last example, I'm gonna reset the opacity to 100 and the flow to three. And this for the most part is what I use when I'm doing retouching and I'm painting on a mask. Because what this lets you do is paint on a mask very slowly. Um, if I wanted to, I could always achieve 100% opacity if I paint on enough times. So as you can see, it goes on very slowly. This is very, very useful for when you're painting in a mask and you wanna just subtly adjust the shadows or the brightness or dodge and burn. Um, I also use it for masking in between layers when I'm doing real estate and I have two layers together and I wanna mix part of one into another. 3% is a good ratio. Any less than that, it just can take too long to paint. Um, but 3% is pretty good. You want to make sure that your hardness for your brush is also very low, close to zero, which is what we've done here. The brush hardness has been zero across the board. 
So that's the explanation of how flow works. And I'm going to just quickly jump over to capture one to show you a real world example. So this is a photo we took in our studio and it's a little bit dark right around her leg. I don't want to brighten it up too much, but I want to have a little bit of light on that. So I'm going to use the built in style brushes and I'm going to just choose shadows recover. And if I right click, it brings up the brush settings and I've got my opacity at hundred and my flow set to five. I'm going to show you what happens if I bring my flow all the way up to 100. Actually, I want to soften my brush too. I'm going to drop that hardness to zero. So if I start painting, as you can see, it's obviously too much. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go back to my brush. I'm going to change my flow down to three. I'm going to do the same thing. It's very, very subtle. So you can see the flow is very useful. And the more I brush on, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. Very slowly though, because you don't want it to be obvious. Now, see, I overdid it. <laughs> I made it too much. So undo, and I'm going to do that again. Probably reduce the brush a little bit. So if I turn this layer off, you can see what the differences are. But it was so subtle, you could barely tell as it was happening. So I'm going to turn on the mask by pressing M. And as you can see, I went over a little bit. So I'm just going to reduce that brush size. Type the letter E for erase. And maybe just take it off of here so it's not lightening the background too much. And my eraser is set to the same settings as the brush. So it's going to have a low flow on it. So that's a real world example of how you would use flow with your brush tool when you're masking. So to summarize, flow again is just how much is laid down as a percentage of your opacity. So if your opacity is at 100% and your flow is at 50, you're basically laying down something that has a 50% opacity with each stroke. And the big benefit of flow is when you brush across the same location repeatedly, it accumulates. Um, and like I said, if you're Opacity is 100. You can always reach 100% opacity if you brush repeatedly over the same spot, regardless of your flow setting. Obviously, if the flow is low, like 3, it's going to take you a while to make it 100% opaque. But if your opacity is, say, 50%, you will only ever achieve 50% opacity by brushing back and forth across the same area, regardless of your flow. And of course, that's only true if you don't release the mouse button. You can always paint subsequent new strokes on top of previous strokes to build up the opacity. So that's it. I hope that made sense. If you have any questions, just shoot me a message in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. I'm John Martins. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time on Apple A Day. Mm -hmm.